Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to be talking about otters and a little bit about all otters, but specifically otters and river or river otters in Kentucky, um, which have become much more common here in the last few years uh, for, for many reasons. But um, they are definitely things that we see much more often than we did, say, three, four decades ago. So let's jump right into it. Um, let's give you a little framework about otters in general and otters of the world. Um, and, you know, all otters are, are carnivores uh, and they're all part of the musselid family or the weasel family. Um, and, you know, and many people can kind of put that together. They look very similar in terms of their body structure where you have um, a very long body the, uh, uh, where the head uh, goes to, a, to is narrow um, and uh, uh, cylinder like and goes all the way back to a tail that's usually pretty elongated to help them with balance or swimming. Um, and, you know, they range in size uh, from very small, um, right? Mustelids in general, weasels and very small where you have the little least weasel, it's like six inches long total, uh, all the way up to our uh, largest otter here, which is the giant otter, which um, is found in South America. Um, but in terms of otters in general, right, there there's 13 species worldwide. Many of these, unfortunately, are endangered or threatened. And actually, we have one of these species is now extinct. Uh, the Japanese otter, which was declared uh, extinct uh, about three decades ago with the last known individual seen in the 70s. Um, so we're down to actually 12 species worldwide. Uh, and many of these species have lots of subspecies similar to the river otter. Uh, but they are found throughout Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, North, Central, and South America, um, living uh, along or near or within um, various sized bodies of water. Um, and we even include two that are, are marine in nature, where we have uh, the sea otter that many of us are very familiar with, which is found along the northwest coast of North America, right, from Alaska down along Canada uh, and into uh, California. Um, and then we have the South American version, which is the marine otter that is also in the Pacific Ocean that runs along the coast uh, of, of uh, Central and South America. Um, and, you know, they, they commonly, right, they're carnivores, so they're, they're meat eaters, they're commonly consuming a lot of fish, crustaceans, um, river, on the, on the non-marine side, they're, they're consuming amphibians, um, small mammals, and birds even on occasion. Now, the largest otter in the world is, as I mentioned, the giant otter, which is the largest muscle in the world, um, which is coming in at uh, just about two meters long. Uh, so a little over six feet, and roughly six feet, uh, and 34 kilograms. Uh, so upwards of, um, you know, uh, if you do 2.2 times there, you're looking at 70, 80 pounds in many instances. So that's a very large weasel. Uh, the smallest otter is the Asian small clawed otter, uh, which is only coming in at about um, two to three feet uh, at, at most. Uh, and it weighs roughly about 12 pounds as an adult. Um, and, you know, you can see, uh, you know, the pictures there of those two species, the, the giant otter in the top and the, the uh, small clawed otter in the bottom there. Uh, they have very similar appearances to each other, their, their facial structure, their bodies, they're all very similar in structure and appearance. Uh, with some coloration variation, you can see the white patch in the giant otter. Uh, but most cases, they are, are dark uh, furred animals uh, with brownish to, to dark brown color, uh, with their bellies being a slightly lighter color, uh, you know, brown slash silvery mix. Uh, and that's to help with camouflage as they're swimming around. So the dark on the top really helps conceal them from predators above them. And the, the lighter colored belly is for their prey. They're looking up. It makes it harder for them to distinguish that, that otter as it swims through uh, the water. Now, we have uh, within Kentucky the North American river otter. Um, so this is our species. And as you can see the range, it, it it's, goes um, all the way down to Florida in the southeast. And it kind of comes up and goes around the plain states in the Midwest. And then comes, you know, goes through Canada and comes back around. Uh, along the North Pacific Northwest coast there uh, and into many of the uh, internal states as well. Um, these guys are, are, are a fairly long-lived species, upwards of eight, nine plus years. Um, and uh, the females are going to give birth to about three to five pups every spring, um, just like uh, all their other counterparts there. Their primary diet is fish, uh, which sometimes gets them into trouble. We'll talk a little about that later. Uh, but crustaceans, so freshwater clams and mussels, amphibians, frogs, 
um, crayfish, uh, small mammals if they find them uh, al along the shoreline, um, and then al also birds on occasion. Uh, and these guys primarily spend most of their time uh, in or along riverbanks. Uh, it's estimated that they spend about 20-ish percent, 25 percent of their time in the actual water itself, where uh, the vast majority of their time then is spent um, not in the water. It can be basking on the banks or, or, or um, you know, searching for food along the banks um, and, and or consuming the food along the banks. Um, so they don't really spend all their time within the actual water itself. Um, so a, many times these guys are very social. Um, the vast majority of the species are very social uh, and they will get into large groups, um, especially uh, the females when they have the pups, you'll they'll regularly see them all together um, or even more than, than one female and pups. Um, and you know the, I think the highest number documented was around 25 individuals together at once. Uh, that's especially true with the, the giant otter in the south. They tend to get in large groups as well. Um, and these groups are called romps or rafts if you're uh, in, in the marine setting, right? So the, the sea otters uh, tend to get in what are called rafts and they float around together on their backs. Uh, sometimes you'll see the cute pictures of them holding hands, which is not so they lose each other, but to help keep their pads warm on their, their, their hands. Um, and uh, this is done to, to help both uh, in terms of feeding efficiency and, and hunting, as well as pre uh, uh, a way of keeping them safe from predators. Um, and, um, you know, they, they, they're called a romp because of the playful nature they tend to have. They romp around a lot. Uh, many of you may have seen that video of the otters uh, in the zoo where they're chasing the butterfly uh, around their, um, their enclosure to <laughs> together. Um, so that's kind of, of why it's uh, called a romp is because of that playful nature they often have. Uh, many times they're very curious and, and uh, will come up quite close to investigate um, things that are new in their environment. Now, river otters uh, populations had declined drastically, uh, especially in the you know, late 1800s or, and, and turn of the century into the 20th century. Um, and um, were very limited in, in many places. Their range contracted. Um, they were, I believe it was about 12 states they were extirpated from. Um, and due to stocking efforts and, and, and limiting harvest and adding a lot of protections to them, um, their um, population uh, has drastically increased. Um, and most of those efforts were in the 70s. Uh, where uh, as of 1976, there were over 4,000 otters uh, reintroduced into 21 different states within North, uh, within the United States. Um, and, you know, in many cases that those efforts have really resulted in large, uh, very uh, stable or growing populations of river otters. Um, now, they are sometimes confused with, with several other semi-aquatic um, fur bears. Uh, so these are, are mammals that um, we consider a fur bear. So an animal that was harvested for fur. Um, that and semi-aquatic meaning they live parts of their part or some most of their life within aquatic environments. Um, but they all have very similar appearances. And then uh, you know if you're on a boat, uh, say on the weekend, you see what you think is an otter. Uh, it could also be one of these uh, species that are commonly found throughout Kentucky and in most of the range of the river otter itself. Excuse me. Um, the the one that's probably the most confusing uh, due to the similarity in size is the uh, beaver. Um, it often will swim around with its head above the water, so like otters do. Uh, in in size wise, it uh, is about similar length. Um, weight wise, beavers can be a lot larger, but most of that weight is is hidden underneath the water when they're swimming around. In addition. One of the cool things that beavers have is they have a, a pretty good relationship with otters where otters and beavers are, have been found in the same dens together. Uh, otters will often use uh, old beaver dens or currently uh, active beaver dens as part of their, their daily resting locations or even uh, to have their pups in, uh, especially if it's an abandoned uh, beaver den uh, or lodge. Uh, so these two are commonly found together. There's no direct competition within them because beavers are herbivores and otters are carnivores. Uh, and uh, beavers are large enough that they are not considered a prey source for hunters. Uh, so they um, get along quite well, um, as best as animals can do. Uh, so you will see, often see them in the same water bodies together. 
Uh, the closest um, relative that we would see to uh, river otters that are often confused is the mink, which is that uh, mustelid that's in the top right corner there. The beaver is in the top left, and the beaver and otter together is in the bottom right. But the, uh, the mink, the American mink, is another um, weasel uh, within Kentucky. Uh, it is about uh, a third to even less in size. They, they tend to only get to about a foot to a foot and a half long uh, as adults. Um, and, you know, they are similar to otters in the fact that they spend a lot of time uh, in and around water bodies along riverbanks, ditches. They consume a lot of fish as well uh, and, and amphibians. And, and um, you know, so their dietary overlap is quite quite close. Uh, it's just their size is uh, very different, which allows the otters to eat a lot larger prey items uh, than, than the mink does. Uh, but mink behave and act in a similar fashion. They they run around very quickly. They move upwards of 15 kilometers a night. Uh, they swim to go after fish, uh, though not as common as the river otter does, but they will do it. Um, so you may see a quick glimpse of a, a, an animal moving in a very um, weasel-like fashion. Um, and if it's a very small animal, um, you know, it would be probably the mink rather than an otter. Uh, they're also a little darker uh, often than, than river otters uh, in terms of their, their blackish brown appearance rather, rather than the, the, the somewhat more chestnutty brown uh, otter can have. Lastly, the, the one that um, is probably least likely to be confused with a river otter is the muskrat, which is in the bottom left there. It is small, much smaller than a river otter. Uh, it, its tail is also uh, hairless. Uh, and it's um, often uh, you can clearly see the the body is above the water when it swims, uh, as opposed to say the river otter or the beaver that may keep only most of their head above the water. Uh, so those are the the ones that can be easily confused with river otters um, if you're out and about in Kentucky. Now some fun otter facts. We'll switch it up. I went through all the natural history there and, and kind of got a little long, but um, sea otters are actually uh, have the densest fur of all mammals, and it's helped keep them warm in those environments that they exist in. Right, so so floating around in the coast of Alaska in January is not exactly warm. Uh, so uh, they have to have that there to in order to survive. Um, Otters, because of their nature of how they gather food, uh, a lot of they spend a lot of time under the water chasing prey or or grabbing um, mussels or clams from the the bottom of the river body. Um, they can stay underwater for upwards of eight minutes at a time uh, to help them gather their food or escape predators. The in addition, these guys are tool users. They are known to use tools to open those those clams or mussels to get at that food source. So they're um, many times documented situations where they're using a rock to bust open the shells on those uh, uh, gathered food items. Now within Kentucky, um, you know, status of river otters in Kentucky, uh, our, our population has been and is probably still growing, uh, especially over the last 20 or 30 years. And, and um, as an indicator of that, um, there is a rather, um, not completely open harvest to them, but a, a generous harvest of upwards of 10 otters uh, within the year for trappers. Uh, there are some zone limits. There are areas of the state where we tend to have more otters than others. Uh, so the Western uh, counties there shaded in orange uh, are a much higher river otter density and population than those in the East. Uh, so you're allowed to take more otters out of those counties relative to the Eastern counties. Uh, and Due to the nature of otters and how they behave and the numbers that we now have, um, we're starting to see some human wildlife interactions and conflicts that are not necessarily great uh, and for both uh, sides of the story. Um, so part of that comes in the fact that the, their behavior comes into play here. Uh, they are a species that uses a what's called a latrine. So they will, they will defecate in the same area and leave their scat in the same area, um, often very close to water bodies uh, where it's easy in and out access and they consume food. It's all, it's used as a scent for, uh, post for animals. So it's, it's good to have in areas that are very obvious. Uh, unfortunately, that could mean docks and, um, and uh, uh, boats and, and whatnot. Um, also fish, um, you know, being the main component of their diet. If you're running a, a pay to, to fish lake, uh, pay fish lake, um, you know, having an otter come in and wipe out your entire pond is a possibility because they're such good uh, fish, at fishing. 
Um, and on top of that, they can get into other issues uh, like chasing chickens on occasion, not not common at all. Mink are, are much more common than that, but it does happen uh, here and there. Um, one of the funny things is uh, there's actually been uh, in 2021, there was a pack of of pack of beavers. Well, I'm going to put that in air quotes here uh, in Alaska uh, that were um, in a, a, a suburban area, a suburban pond that were actually attacking and chasing people. Um, they were rather aggressive and Alaska had to, to step in. The, the Department of Natural Resources there had to step in fish and game uh, to deal with them. Uh, because they had chased uh, several dogs uh, uh, and also chased children, uh, so there are uh, they they their personality can cause them problems. Um, they are a pretty ferocious predator um, for for anything that is smaller than them. They're incredibly fast. Uh, they have uh, strong jaws uh, and pretty big teeth. So um, it's not something that I would usually worry about whenever I'd see an otter, but um, evidently there is a situation. This is the only one I found. Uh, of that situation. So, you know, if you're having otter issues, how do you then prevent them? So this is how we deal with the human wildlife interactions and conflicts. Um, and a big part of this is a lot of times uh, otters are hopping on boats, hopping on docks. Uh, you may have things like cat food or you're storing fish or things that smell like fish. Otters are looking for that food source. So if you can find a way to, to properly store those items so that otters don't get that reward, it can kind of help um, keep that interest level a little lower. That's not gonna solve the situation in, in, in all cases, right? So if an otter is coming up and using your dock as a latrine, it's really hard to deal with that uh, by just getting rid of the food. Uh, you can you know, get rid of the scat and, and move it to a different area and hope that they stop using it, but um, unfortunately it becomes a problem. Um, you can try to use barriers, uh, effective ones include uh, electric, right? So you can, you can try to put shock, um, shock them from getting into places. Um, so this works really well on small ponds. If you're trying to prevent an otter from getting into your pond or koi pond, uh, if you know an otter's around, uh, those electric barriers like they do for chicken netting, like the electric um, netting for chickens to protect chickens from, from predators will also work to protect your pond uh, from otters. In addition, if they can only access those areas by climbing up out of the water in one location, you can put a fence uh, up and around that or a different kind of barrier to keep them from being able to climb up, which can help limit uh, access and also problems caused by access. Um, there are some folks that have suggested repellents, uh, whether that's pepper-based uh, repellents uh, or uh, other items that may make the area less uh, conducive to, to them being around. Uh, they are mammals, so they're, they're using both smell uh, and taste to determine if they like things. Uh, so if you use uh, those kind of deterrents, it may have a success in keeping those otters away. Uh, but um, there's not a whole lot of scientific evidence on, on how effective they are. Lastly, if you really have a big problem, we see this a lot where, um, you know, otters will cause uh, thousands of dollars worth of the damage on boats if they get into them. Um, and, catch, and trapping those otters to remove them, you know, you can, because of the status of the populations are so strong, um, this is now a, a method that, that is perfectly legal. Uh, if you're having an issue, uh, trappers can, can get protect and get rid of those, those um, otters that are causing the problem using either uh, what we call a body gripping trap or a cage trap or a comm stock trap, which is a really specialized um, uh, cage trap for otters and beavers. If you need some uh, other information relative to things like otter harvest or how to deal with problem otters, uh, we have both uh, our extension publication that can be found here in the bottom uh, link there, or if you need to reach out to um, Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, uh, information on otters and other fur bears can be found at that uh, link, uh, as well as you can just give them a call and, and talk to um, uh, the uh, agency personnel that can, can uh, give you all the information you may need relative to legal uh, routes uh, or um, obtaining uh, tags, because Otters are uh, ha or have a a um, protection, uh, so they have to to have a fur. If you have a trapper that harvests an otter, uh, they want to sell the pelt or maintain or keep the pelt. You need to obtain what's called a CITES tag from the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, and that holds true if you're dealing with um, you know legal harvest or also uh, having problematic otters. You want to make sure that you have your CITES tag situation um, well understood. All right. Well, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day.